Hello everyone. My name is Eric. This is a video coming out of Team Teachers, teamteachers.com, in a series of videos to talk about online teaching and learning in my attempt to help and support the move to emergency remote teaching in the current COVID-19 health crisis. And in this particular video, let's talk about plate spinning. <laughs> And what I mean about plate spinning is this conversation that I think is going to be happening uh, quite often, maybe fervidly, uh, in the coming months as we try to get students back into our classroom somehow. We try to get some sorts of students coming back to our campuses, having a little bit more continuation of our old style of face-to-face -face learning. And this is something that combines a lot of concepts of in-class and online and synchronous learning. And uh, it's called the concurrent classroom, sometimes called hybrid learning. These, a lot of these terms um, have been coined by several different teachers and researchers. So you might see these named differently if you went to go search them on the internet. Um, I call it hybrid learning sometimes, but hybrid learning could be also another just plain word for mixing online and in face-to-face -face classrooms. But for this concurrent classroom, this definition of hybrid learning, we're gonna be spinning a lot of plates because we're gonna be doing a lot of things at the same time. Because in this situation, like this poor guy here, um, we're going to be talking about learners when you as a teacher are gonna be teaching to a group of students in a classroom to their faces and at the same time you're going to be teaching to a whole other group of students online through a camera so that's why it's called the concurrent classroom this is synchronous you might have some asynchronous components to it if you're un unfamiliar with synchronous and asynchronous uh, online learning I have some other videos on the team teachers channel please go take a look so that's why we're talking about plate spinning here. You have a lot of things happening. Uh, you have learners in all over the world and right in front of you. And so I wanted to just make a quick video to start a conversation, to start people thinking about what they might want to start preparing, start thinking about, start having conversations around trying to get at least some students into a classroom um, Whatever, for whatever reason that pressures might be happening or for reasons that you might want to get uh, back in to a classroom for your students, not all of them might be able to come. There's other safety considerations, of course, as well. So this might be inevitability for a lot of teachers where you're just having to teach to, in two modes at the same time. And that is called the concurrent classroom or hybrid learning. What do we do about this situation? What are the, some of the issues that come up? And so um, let's talk about some of the things that happen here. So when we're talking about plate spinning, one of the plates that we're spinning up in the air is attention. And your attention needs to be on where your attention is. Uh, you might think um, that moving face to face uh, and having Watch, being an online learner, watching a class of you teaching a class might be more interactive than perhaps just an online course where students are maybe going through an e-learning website or asynchronously watching videos. Uh, but some studies have shown and some students have reported that being an online learner in a concurrent classroom and watching students interact and watching you interact with students, it might give them a sense, a higher sense of, excuse me, isolation, a sense of fear of missing out um, because they're behind a window. They can't have the same level of interaction between other students and you. Um, so your attention to a chat window or um, video screens from other students and the students in the classroom 
and your student's attention on you or the other students needs to be regulated. Uh, this could mean changing your gaze to the camera uh, for a certain amount of time and looking at the camera so students feel you're looking at them and switching your gaze to your in-class students where your students in the class also feel like you're not just talking to the camera and they're not there, uh, they're there for a specific reason and, um, and are being spoken to. But also your attention to the chat, questions that are coming up in class and online and the attention of your students to each other. So you have to kind of maybe give yourself a timer perhaps, like 10 minutes talking to the camera, 10 minutes talking to the students if you talk that long or vice versa. So you just have to pay attention to where your attention is going and make sure that everyone is attended to. That could, that's a lot of points already spinning it up in the air. Let's look at a few others. Devices. Okay, so one big issue uh, that happens or could happen, especially in Japan, is the idea that now we have students that need to interact, depending on the mode of your class, uh, interact with each other both in class and in an online environment. That means students are gonna be pulling out their cell phones, more students are gonna be bringing their personal uh, laptops and devices into class for use in your classroom. And their attention is going to be now uh, on their devices a lot more in necessity because maybe you're looking at the camera or maybe you're typing something in chat for the students online, the students in class, are going to need to get that information too unless you want to uh, figure out a way to put a screen in class um, and have students look at the screen instead of their devices there's a couple of different setups that you could have in a class maybe i'll make another uh, video about the physical setup of rooms as well but in short there's going to be a lot of devices in class that means a lot more microphones a lot more speakers Chances for feedback and that squeak, uh, can you hear me, can you hear me situation uh, happening not just between you and your online uh, audience, but students between each other, et cetera, et cetera. So managing that, having the infrastructure for Wi-Fi, having the computing power and the resources to do all that is also another spinning plate for the concurrent classroom. Student-to-student -student interaction. Okay, so the mode of your teaching um, may or may not lend well to the concurrent classroom, this hybrid situation. If you are a lecturer um, and you have sort of a traditional, listen to me, I'm going to give you information, then I'm going to give you a chance to ask me questions, uh, that won't really matter too much in this environment. Uh, the students actually might feel like when they come to class, they might as well stay at home in that situation, in my opinion. But um, you can manage that a little bit easier because all you have to do is move your gaze or make sure that you're talking to both audiences fairly well and you're getting at that information. Then when it comes time to answer questions, you're checking both in class and um, online inputs or incoming questions to your your lecture where things get a little more trickier is when you want to facilitate projects group presentations class discussions um, all the more higher level and more uh, interactive components of of class uh, learning design uh, you'll have to set up different ways of going about it what you might find is more movement towards asynchronous type learning. I might talk a little about that a little bit later, but um, it is possible in this situation to have groups and to put groups both online and in class people mixed together. I've taught classes and been in classes where I've been both a person in class and I've had people in my group that are in online, so like a group of three people in class and two people are online and we're all uh, discussing things perhaps in a, um, a breakout Zoom room 
or etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's all that stuff is possible <clears throat> having class discussions uh, what is very difficult though is having a group presentation from a group member or members in that situation to the rest of the class so you have your online class they might need to get in front of a camera or get in front of their device but maybe they're in class partners or and their online partners uh, can't get in and present because the screens and all, and stuff that's happening in class so you might want to start moving that stuff a little bit more asynchronously so if they're going to present they're going to make videos they're going to put something online on your LMS or maybe on a Google Doc or something and watch it uh, at their own pace. Um, some students will have difficulties with the technology, so they're going to have problems. They're going to probably need more time for discussions uh, just to get situated, get in the right place, make sure everyone can hear them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, facilitating that. Um, it's just another plate in the air. <laughs> right, I talked about this already. Um, if you're inclined to do more group work, uh, project-based stuff, you will find that you'll have to move more things asynchronously where students can watch lectures online, reabsorb information because they were... Uh, concentrated on what was happening online when it should have been in class, et cetera, et cetera. So if uh, you want students to be working together or working in groups, you'll need to start to think about moving more of the interactions uh, where it doesn't have to happen during your concurrent classroom and support as much as you can asynchronously so you can have more time. Uh, I want to stress this next part very fervently. What you think might take less time, especially when you're starting out in the current classroom, will take more time. So a lot of us, when we experience going online for the first time, um, during this, when this COVID started and we started doing emergency remote te teaching, you noticed that things took a little bit longer than you had thought. Um, so that is going to happen again in the concurrent classroom. So support it with some synchronous learning. And maybe we can all spin some plates together. <laughs> I have a whole lot more I'd like to share on this topic. And I'm interested to know your opinions and thoughts about this. Moving. And so you can please reach me on my website, ericahawkinson.com. You can go to teamteachers.com and see more videos on this series. Um, there's a whole bunch more information. Uh, reach out to me so we can all learn from each other. Uh, but I'll say goodbye for now, and maybe I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.